Well, hello my friends. Al Furtado, the Rebel Turner. And I'm back. Not back with the turning. Because as some of you know, we are living aboard a catamaran. And the initial thought was that I was going to be setting up a wood turning shop in the catamaran. It's still not out of the equation that still might take place. But I am very concerned, of course, with weight. Not the turning, not the motion of the boat, but the weight. I've set up the boat ready to accept a wood lathe. We've put a generator on it uh, so I can produce power when I'm on anchorage. And of course, we can always hook up the shore power when we are in the marina. That's looking a little bit slim for the simple fact of weight on a catamaran. Catamarans are very, very sensitive to weight if you want to do any sailing. Now, if I was going to be set up in an anchorage and not worry about leaving that anchorage, or if I was going to be set up going to marinas and just hooking up over there and staying there, there would be no issue whatsoever. But seeing that my plan is actually to go sailing and to actually cross the Atlantic, weight is a huge factor that I have to take into account. As it is, the boat is a little bit sluggish because I have the late tools that I kept, chucks, cutting tools, grinder, uh, just the minimum miscellaneous stuff that I would need. Probably weighing a couple of hundred pounds. And that really is putting a damp on me. Anyway, sorry about the interruption over here. But anyway, so we got that in mind. The secondary thing that I am a little bit concerned about, actually I'll very concerned about, is controlling the dust environment aboard a catamaran. Um, I don't know. I've thought of different areas and how I could isolate it and uh, keep it. So I will play with that idea and see where we go in the future. For now, one thing for fact is that if we, which we are, we are on, uh, on the hard right now uh, for the next week or so waiting on a, uh, a replacement propeller for the boat. But one of the plans that I know that would work for me is if we do a passage and we end up somewhere, some of you might be interested in contacting me and saying, hey, since you are in such and such a place, we have a lathe, we'd be honored and that way I could possibly do a wood turning session with you or if you know somebody that does uh, that as well and you communicate with that person um, we could probably arrange for something that sort and do a video session of the meeting and the wood turning in between wood turnings, if that takes place, what I would like to do is focus a little bit on what makes me the rebel turner, why I do certain things, how do I choose uh, the wood orientation that I do. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, still offer you some information on wood stuff. So I'm going to be going between live shots, computer shots, drawing programs, and so on and so forth, and showing you different ideas that you could incorporate into your own turning. We will discuss tool grinds, we will discuss tools, and some of you might know how I am as far as tools. I really, till this day, am a believer, a firm believer, 
that you work with whatever you got. Don't be sold on name brands as being the only option you have. I will work with Harbor Freight tools, I will work with lower quality tools, I will work with some higher quality tools. But not because I believe that the higher quality tools are the tool of choice, but because it was offered to me. So therefore, I have accessibility to those tools. And I will discuss as to the pros and the cons. So let's go ahead and turn you to the next subject, today's subject, which will be how or why do you orient a wood in a specific way. So therefore, we're going to go into the computer screen, capture shot, and discuss those options. And with this, for me, it's completely new as well. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to incorporate these two mediums, the camera and the computer screen. So, on the computer, let me do a capture. And by the way, what I use to edit my videos is PowerDirector, Cyberlinks PowerDirector. And I find it to be one of the best programs that I have done. Now, over here, I have an option of capture from screen, capture from an external device which is now hooked up, or just a microphone. We're going to go to capture screen. And I'm going to open up a friendly uh, drawing program, in this case, Photoshop. But whatever you use, draw or uh, whatever uh, program you have will be fine. So right now I'm opening up Photoshop and I'm not going to open up any specific file. I'm going to do some quick drafts of uh, different ideas. So I'll grab a paintbrush and I'm just going to wiggle. Uh, better do something a little bit darker than that and shrink down on the brush size. Okay, so I'm going to basically draw the outside shape of a, a log. This is looking down, straight down to the log. And if I got something with that much character versus something like that, I will choose this any time over that as a log. Of course, you have the growth rings uh, going through here. Okay, so we're not going to focus on the growth rings because that's not part of it. I will uh, briefly discuss pit. People ask me all the time, why would I leave a pit on a turning? And in most cases, the pit is not a problem whatsoever. But if I had two logs like this, okay, and I will uh, maybe draw three-dimensional to this if I can. Okay, so this would be something like this. Okay, so this is the shape of a log, basically. And what I would do with something of this case is I would probably, most likely, do this and end grain turning because of all this uh, character that's over here. And what would happen is on these lower valleys that you got here, 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 and here, that would create your bowl to look something like this. Okay. 
this is just a rough drawing so when you start turning from here all these high points would reflect on B and these high points that you see over here all the valleys that you see here the lower points would indicate these lower spots on your bow so when all said and done especially if you can keep the bark on your piece of wood there's a need to be there but if you can keep the bark up then the more character you end up with because around the bark of course the bark is not completely smooth the bark will be jags that will give you small spikes like this all the way through depending on how high the bark is on the bark okay so instead of just having a smooth line you end up with all these little intricate extra detail that otherwise you don't have so that's what I would do with something like this now with something circular okay yes you got the pit here if you cut it in half like this and you were to keep the pit what's going to happen is this will end up being shaped like this when it dries up it will bow, uh, bow slightly away from the pit uh, the pit will stay the highest point of it and you might not want to do that so this is a case where you might want to slice that up get rid of the pit and you end up exactly with a bowl of what you see top and the bottom and it's just a bowl so um, I don't particularly go for this and uh, you know it's not my choice this adds a lot more interest than this for sure crotches okay is a different story okay so you have a piece of wood that's a, a, a crotch like this okay and you got the pits one on each side here all right yes you can do almost the same thing as this but that doesn't work very well because what happens is you end up with a bowl that uh, whatever ends up very much like this because this valley is so thick uh, so far down and this in general is a lot narrower this area right here is a lot narrower than the area here in uh, roundness you, by the time you start turning this from the top you end up with just a V shape basically so it's not an option that I normally choose so on a case like this what I would choose would be to somewhat cut it round and capture some of that and then dig this up and this would be the bowl right here discarding these higher ends and basically you would end up with a bowl similar to this but with a little bit or should I say actually more similar to this if you do it with the bark and you're turning it from this top down more similar to this now one thing to take into account of course is the fact that well, okay what happens this valley is going to create a pretty deep valley and then depending on how coarse your uh, bark is on this uh, you don't have a lot going on but you could have something very interesting so what happens on a case like that is you end up with a bowl that's almost flat on the top but depending on these two areas right here it could end up being more like this and so this indicates the highest point here this indicates this other high point here this valley down here indicates the crotch area 
And uh, that would be somewhat interesting. Now, there are so many variables that you have to consider. A bowl is a bowl. A bowl is a bowl, unless you do something different with it. And you're going to see amongst my series that I come up with completely different designs from your typical install and turning. And that in itself adds another spectrum, another area for you to explore quite a bit. So let's take this first shape that we got here instead of ending up with, uh, with something like that you can add out of the same wood a pedestal bowl like this that looks really nice and takes it away from your typical bowl I do that quite a bit one of my signature pieces let me erase some of this Okay, so you have this log right here. Or something similar to that log. So, um, rather than do this, if you have the log that's like this, it doesn't matter what the, the shape is, Okay, you got the pit here, you got all these highs and low spots. Rather than do this, you can invert it and do it upside down. So you would start turning your log. When you mount this on the lid, okay, you would start turning from a little further down and start turning this up like this almost into a half moon you don't have to go all the way up to the top because that's waste cuts and you have your life center over here either way and what happens is you end up with a bowl that looks like this just like that okay so this stop over here would be round and this would be going into it and you would cave this uh, cut or gouge this area up and you end up with a bowl like that and you don't see the rest of the log let me erase some of this to make a little bit more sense so once you would start turning it And this would be the my what I consider it to be the mushroom bowl except now the bark the bark is down here okay whatever the shape of the bark is it would be down this bottom edge all the way around and from here on up it would be your cut it would be smooth to whatever point you want to decide to go and then you would concave this in let me erase one more spot to give you a better understanding of that so the bowl the, t the edge the top edge would be smooth the bottom edge would be jagged like that and you would finish that off similar to this one the only thing is you are undermining over here so this is a tricky cut and you would have the base of the bowl over here and then you would create your pedestal And there would be your mushroom or droop over bowl on pedestal that really, really stands out and becomes unique 
one of a kind and you will never ever duplicate this piece because it's all determined by these jags these jags will determine what's happening down here sorry about that so uh, anyway that's what the droop over bowl would look like really really nice looking piece and something that you can cherish for a long time it's one of my favorite turnings that I can think of doing um, they're fun to do they have a little bit of a challenge a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to the bottom over here um, but other than that I mean it's it's a nice looking piece and you will never be sorry that you did one don't mind don't mind this curvature this is a perfect circle because that's being created by the lathe I was only focusing on this bottom part and I apologize for the the bad drawing on this now let's talk about one thing that in most cases I find to be the most the thing that most people do that I believe uh, that didn't take enough thought about what people do at times and that's this the size of the base has a lot to do with your finished product do not make a base that's so small on a on an oversized bowl that looks like it's going to tilt over one way or the other try making the base at least two-thirds the size of your piece so if your piece is 10 inches wide try to keep that two-thirds of that which would mean half would be five uh, plus half of that is uh, seven inches roughly so try to keep your piece balanced it's uh, very crucial sometimes I will see a beautiful beautiful piece of work somebody spent a lot of time on it and they'll make a fancy finial or fancy uh, piece and then the whole piece is ruined in my own opinion by having such a small pedestal when that pedestal should have been almost the same size as the top two-thirds roughly at least half no less than half so always go closer to you're better off being oversized let's put it this way you are better off being oversized than you are undersized once you make a cut you cannot add the wood back so prior to making that cut step away from the piece as it's turning step away from it look at it from different angles and saying oh yeah this is where I want to stop or I'm going to just trim it a little bit more and make those cuts based on your observation or even just thinking about it stop walk away come back the next day to it and you will see with a little bit more clear vision of which direction you want to go and I do that occasionally and a lot of times I don't a lot of times because when I would go, go into the lathe I would put it up cut it broom, turn it and let the wood speak I, yes I use that term all the time let the wood talk to you do not be preset on which direction you're gonna go and not adapt to what the wood is telling you I'm telling you that is the difference is you make a cut you see which way that cut wants to flow and keep going and that's how you let the woods talk to you 
and instead of coming up with a mindset that you're gonna create a bowl that looks like this you go to it and you start cutting and you see it develop and you let it develop on its own form and you make a cut it's like oh I like that oh I don't like that oh I gotta straighten this out and you are constantly making adjustments to what is developing in front of your eyes and that makes the difference of being a wood turner and somebody who just turns wood so this is it for today's lesson I thank you for watching I hope you don't mind this new medium that you see here and I will improve on the techniques that I use and maybe even the subject matter thanks for watching we'll see you next time this is Alfred Tardo the Rebel Turner signing off from Eidos Eidos is the name of the boat don't forget also to join that channel of mine which will be more on the sailing aspects of what we do on a regular daily basis my wife and I and this one I will try to give you hints like this don't forget hit like subscribe hit that little bell button so you can be notified of upcoming videos thanks again we'll see you later